Okay guys, welcome to the third section of this course. We are we will talk about free IPA user administration and app management. All right. At the first section, we did installation of free IPA server and configuration. The second section, we installed free IPA client and connected it to the free IPA server. And also we created a group and added those client servers to the group for easy management. Now in this section, now we are going to be talking about what free IPA user authentication and uh, management. So in this particular section, we are going to be creating a user in free IPA server we're going to be creating a group in free IPA server we're going to assign a user to the group and then we can now log in to any of the client machine using user credentials all right without further ado let us jump in and then start a configuration here is my free IPA server remember that free IPA stands a free identity policy audit all right so here I have under identity so we have entities like user server services group ID views and the auto -pender. so I'm going to be clicking on the user section so if you see by the default we have admin user this was the user that was created during the time of server provision right so here now i'm going to come here to add, click on the add button to create a new user now in creating of user now what are the requirements right so i'm going to be provision let's say i'm creating a user called daniel Right. So I create the user called Daniel. Uh, let's say Daniel uh, Linus. Okay, Daniel. Then Daniel. Please. Let me pick that Daniel. User. User login. Is Daniel. All right. Let's look at that. And the first name is Daniel. And the second name is John. Now I may not try to add. I can select. If I have a group, I can select a group. But now I don't have a group yet. So I'll just uh, create a password one. All right, I'm going to be adding now. So you see, I've added Daniel. As so the login is Daniel. So that the full name, all right? The, this is the user ID, the email email address for this particular user that we created. So I'm going to be creating another user. So I created a user called Ebuka. So I created a, a user called Ebuka Okafo. So I'm going to provision the password. So I've created the password right now, so let me add the user. Alright, so I'm going to be stopping at this moment. So since I've created these two users, the next thing now is for us to add it to add these users to the group, right? So how to do that? Just create group. So you can see by default, uh, these are the three groups that are these are the four groups that are created by default. Alright, so next thing let us create a group for us ourselves for those users. So let's say that these are the developers. So you see that it has added the group ID, but if you provision the group ID, then it will add it. So let us click on the group that we just created and then we'll go in and add start adding users. So here are the available users right now. So I can click on them and then add them to that. All right, you can see that these users now are in the group. Let me go back to my users. I can see that the users have been created and also from the group side section from the group session you see that we have this group and when we look at it we have two users in the group now the next thing is that we need to log in to any of those servers using one of these users that we have recruited now let us click on one of these users if you check this user now you see that this user has some configuration such as these are the user identity identity settings of this user this is account setting, right? The account setting now tells something about the password, the password expiration date, and everything. Then if you really want to, okay, this is the principle, right? So this is what the Cabris uses. Cabris call each of the users principles. So if you log into Cabris and then be able to search for Cabris, you see that this user is already available, right? Because this is the remnant, right? And the user is already in the remnant. Remember that Cabris is for authentication. It's used for authentication while LDAP is for directory. So this is the section of the LDAP. So this is the section of the LDAP that is identity settings while the account setting is the Cabris section, right? So now we can, if you still want to do some other uh, modification, we can come here and add some other modification like two factor authentication. We'll come to that and actually. So these are the password policy if you really want to add because the minimum lifetime for a password is just whatever. 
and the maximum lifetime is 90 days. What this means is that after three months, our password will expire, right? Then the user will be forced to change password. Now the Cabris ticket, so this is a Cabris ticket policy. So we still, if you still want to add other information for the user, like the user, if this is the user email, if you want to modify it, you can modify it here. If you want to add the telephone number, the paging number, the mobile number, fax number, and also coming down here, we can also add the email mailing addresses like mailing address, street address, estate, and other things. We still need to talk about the information about the employee if there is an employee in a particular company, and then we need to add that information about the particular department where the user is in and other things. So, this is actually a full documentation about the user and now the next thing we're going to be doing right now is this we would like to actually use this direct user to log into the server one of the servers all right so i'm going to be open one of the client machine so here is the powershell for we are using that background ssh this to log it but this time we're not going to be doing that again just use ssh and l meaning that we are logging in with the username which is daniel so the daniel and the ip address of the server that we're going to be logging in is the one of the client machine so let us check get the uh, ip address of the one of the client machine i think from there so this is the one of the client machine here let us use this to log into the server prince channel i made a video so we just type yes all right you can see that i've just uh, used ssh okay here is the command ssh l l showing that we are specifying we are connecting with a username then this is the ip address of the server we are connecting to and when we hit enter all right then it will take us to in the server all right so it's asking us for the user password what's what the password of that user Right, so we can see that we are trying to authenticate to the server at the moment. So let us just wait a little as it's authenticating. So now that I created, I put the current password, it's now asking me to create a new password for this user. This is what Cabris does. This is what Cabris does for the authentications. This, this is the security behind it. That anytime a new user is being created, a user during the first time of logging, a user must be asked to a user must be forced to create a new password because the administrator knows the password which he used to create at the first time. It would not be good for the admin to also know the password that the user uses. So that's why it is a mandatory that a, as a user is trying to log in, a new password will be created so that it's be added to that user. Just as Active Directory, right? So let's log in. Let's put a new password. All right, so I've entered the new password. All right, you can see, guys, that we are in to the server right now. So let me check who am I. See that I am Daniel at this moment. All right, so this is how I'm able to log in to one of the client machine using the user that was created on the free IPA server. Right.